Hello friends, welcome back to my series of tutorials on blocks in AutoCAD. In this video, I would like to introduce a very special type of block that is called dynamic block. Using dynamic blocks, you can attach a number of additional functionality on a block and you can achieve more productivity. I would like to explain this concept by creating a dynamic block of a door. Presently, I am in the drafting and annotation interface. Now I'll click on the insert tab and I'll go to the block editor. So I'll just click on the block editor. The block editor can not only be used to edit a block, but can also be used to create a block. Please go through my previous videos on blocks. If you haven't gone through it, I have already provided the links on the upper right corner of this video. Now I'll give a block name. I'll call it as door dynamic dr underscore dyn I'll give OK Now you will go to the block editor Now I'll start creating a rectangle to indicate the shutter of the door So I'll click on the rectangle command and I'll click the first corner over here Then I'll go to dimension option and I'll give the length of the rectangle as 5 and the width as 90 Now it'll ask you to pick the opposite corner point I'll just pick a point here now this indicates the door shutter. Next I'll create the door swing direction using an arc. So I'll click on arc command and I'll choose start point center end point option. Now center point I'll provide first. So I'll click on center and I want this point as a center point. Now you will see a rubber band line stretching from the center point. Now I'll define the start point using polar coordinate method. Please refer my video on point plotting methods if you don't have an idea about polar coordinates. I have already provided the link in the upper right corner of this video. Now I'll specify that point as at the rate 90 less than 0. Because I want the start point of the arc to be at a distance of 90 unit rightward with respect to this picked point. Now I have defined the start point. Now I am asked to give the end point, I will click to define the end point here. Hence I have created the symbol of a door. Next I will give move command and I will move this door with this particular point as a base point and I want that base point to coincide with the origin. So I will give the second point as 0, 0. This is to specify the insertion point of the block. Next we will attach some added functionality on this block using the block authoring palette. In this we can see various tabs such as parameters, actions, parameter set, constraints etc. First of all we will attach a parameter then we can associate certain actions with those parameters. I would like to define an alignment parameter. So I will just click on the parameters tab and I will choose alignment. Now it will ask you to specify the base point of alignment which is this point then it will ask you to define the direction of alignment. I will choose this particular direction. Now you can see a grip here. This is an alignment grip. Now this door when you insert it this edge will get aligned with any existing edge. But for the alignment parameter we don't have to attach any actions. Next we will attach another parameter which is called flip parameter. So when you choose flip it will ask you to specify a base point of reflection. I would like to define a flip axis passing through the mid of this door. So I will just shift right click and I will choose mid between these two points. This point as well as this point. Now you have got a, an axis. Now I will activate the ortho mode on and I will pick a point here. Now it will ask you to position the label of flip which is called the flip state label. You can position it at any convenient location. I would like to keep it here. Now you will see an exclamation mark here which is an indication that you have to attach an action to this parameter for the exclamation mark to disappear. Now with the flip parameter we always associate flip action. So I'll just click on flip action. Now it will ask you to specify the parameter which is this flip state parameter. Then it will ask you to select the object. You select the entire object using a crossing window and give an enter. Now this exclamation mark will disappear. Next I will attach one more flip state. So I will go to flip parameter once again. But this time I would like to flip this door about a horizontal axis. 
So this is my first point and this is my second point. Now it will ask you to position the label. I would like to position it here. Now you will see the flip grip here. You can just drag it and place it conveniently in a suitable location somewhere over here so that it won't overlap with the alignment grip. Now you have again an exclamation here because you have been attached the flip action. So I'll go to actions and I'll attach flip action and it'll ask you to choose the flip state which is this label and you have to select the entire objects. Okay, now this exclamation disappears. Next, I'm going to save this block by clicking on save block here. Then you can close the block editor. Now we have a block here. Next, I'll go to insert tab. Then I can insert it. But before that, I would like to create a simple wall layout. I'll draw a polyline using the polyline command. And I'll start from this point And I'll give a distance of 300 units. Rightward and upward 200 units. Okay, using the offset command, I'll give an offset distance of 22 units to create a wall thickness. Now this represents the corner of a wall. Next, I'll create a cutout to insert the door. So I'll draw another polyline. So from this nearest point, so I'll just shift and right click to take nearest and I'll draw a perpendicular here. Then I'll give offset again and I'll give an offset distance of 45 units, which is half the door width and I'll create offsets on both sides and I'll erase the center line. Next, I'll mirror these two lines onto the vertical wall using the mirror command and I'll choose this particular point as a first point on the mirror line and this as a second point on the mirror line. Now I've got the mirror image. Now using the move command, I'm going to move this slightly upwards in this direction. Even this can be moved slightly leftward. You can position it in the right location. Next, I'll use trim command to create a cutout here. So I'll click on trim, just give an enter and you can trim off these two lines. Next, I'll insert the door block which we have created. So I'll click on insert tab. Then I'll click on insert and uh, you can just click on more options. Here you can see the representation of the dynamic block of the door and you will see a lightning symbol here which is an indication that it's a dynamic block. And I'll give OK and I'll insert it on this wall. So when I keep the cursor over here, it'll get aligned with that wall. Now when I keep over here, it'll get aligned with that particular wall. When I keep here, it'll get aligned with that wall. So now you can see the alignment parameter in action. But I would like to align it right here. Okay, I have inserted. Now I'll perform one more insertion by giving an enter. Now I've repeated the insert command. Then I would like to insert over here. Now when I take the cursor on this face, it'll get automatically aligned with that face. So you don't have to rotate it. Now just click here. Now it is perfectly aligned. Just click on the door block. Now you will see those two grips corresponding to the flip parameter, corresponding to the flip action which you have specified. Now when I click on this grip, you can flip it along the vertical axis like this. Now you can also click on this grip to flip the door along the horizontal axis. The same flip action you can try on this door. Now you are flipping it about the vertical axis as well as about the horizontal axis. And when you flip a door this way, you don't have to give the rotate or mirror commands. Hence, you have saved a lot of time and effort. And this is how you achieve productivity when you make use of a dynamic block. So in this video, I have explained only two parameters. One was alignment parameter, another one was flip parameter. In the coming videos, we'll see more parameters in action. Hope this tutorial video was a good starter in exploring the interesting topic of dynamic blocks in AutoCAD. Please give me a thumbs up by hitting on the like button below this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for your time.